Hi, I'm Brock Springstead, and this is going to be my tutorial on illustrating mandalas in Adobe Illustrator. So let's start. Uh, when I make a new file, I'm always going to use 30 by 30 inches or 40 by 40 inches, anything to have a perfect square. This is because I'll know exactly where my center anchor point is. When we get into the document here, when we create an object, I know that 15 by 15, if we go up to the top guiding lines here, is perfectly centered. And that's because I'm using a 30 by 30 canvas, so 15 by 15 inches on the X and Y coordinates is perfectly centered. You can go in to your view here, or you can get Control U to turn on and off your smart guides. And this will allow you to quickly see where your center point is when creating an object as well. For example, if I highlight it in the center of the screen, I'll say center. So before we get just into making it all itself, I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks and kind of go over some of the tools I use. So before we get too far into it, I'm going to describe uh, one of the main tips I have for creating a man dolls is using an outside guide box. And by that, I mean creating a box that's perfectly centered over 15 by 15 in this example. And then taking a random object and say placing it right there. So when I rotate this, instead of going to this point and moving the anchor point down here to the center and moving it across the screen, I'm going to use the outside guide box with that object selected. And generally I'll hit Control C to copy, Control F to paste in place, and then I'll go to rotate this, say by 22.5 degrees. Now I'll do Control C again, Control F, and now I'm going to hit Control D, and this is going to repeat my last transformation. And you'll see it's just going to repeat the whole copy, paste, and play, copy, paste, and place, repeat last transformation. And you can see quickly here, I even get a symmetrical design rotated across the screen. Okay, my next thing that you should know before we get too far into this is how to create anchor points and delete anchor points. So I'm just making a shape here, rectangle. So say I want to cut this in half, this object. Well, you could do this by multiple ways, but one of the tips I'll use is I'll create a line across it. I'll hit the plus sign to create an anchor point on this box here. Now to make it just one side of the box, I'm going to select these anchor points with the direct select tool, which is A, and just hit delete now. So those points that we added now are going to leave this side completely open. What else could I think of before we get going here that you probably should know? Oh, why I use a box instead of a elliptical circle, which would kind of probably be the most intuitive means you would think of creating something as a guide and then rotating things around. Let me show you why. Because within Adobe Illustrator, there's a bug. And it's very small, but as you copy, paste, and place and rotate, this elliptical, you're going to see a very small degree of error. It'll be small at first, but then it'll create havoc when you get to around this side of the screen, especially when rotating something multiple times at like a very small angle. So I'll try to demonstrate this bug. Copy, paste in place, then let's go to object, rotate, and let's put it to three degrees. So, copy, paste, and place. And let's just keep on demonstrating so you can kind of start seeing this line do weird things. You can see how it's bouncing. I don't know why it does this, but for some reason, Adobe Illustrator does not like making circles rotate perfectly. 
at very small angles. So I think this is probably enough to demonstrate the bug here. So if I hit Control A to select everything, but you can see here, you got one circle of the path there, you got one circle of the path here. It's just all over the place. So as you're reflecting and rotating objects around screen, this looks small at first, but it adds up over time. And you'll have a lot of weird things. So don't use circles as a rotation or a means of rotating things. Use a square. There's absolutely no difference. You can have a square at any angle as long as it's perfectly centered and everything will repeat just fine. With that being said, and you got those kind of tools and tips in your mind, let's start making something. So once I get into my project, usually I start with a line going across my screen and then I just start duplicating it at about 5 or 2.5 degrees. And I kind of use this as a bit of a, a pie guide, I like to call it. This kind of helps me know how many uh, rotations I need a certain object to go across the screen to keep everything symmetrical. So I just lock this down in my background. I'll make it slightly opaque. Let's give it 50. And that just usually stays in the back while I work away. So generally when I begin, I create start with a circle, usually at five points. But let's work at three today. So I'm just going to, let's think of an object to place as our center. How about a cube? A quick way of making a cube is with a six-sided hexagon. Let's center that up. Someone to be aware of, you can see if something's perfectly centered by going up to the top of the screen here at your X, Y coordinates. See it's close, but if we just left it and relied on that smart guide, it would have been off. So it's always good to double check up here and make sure the center point is exactly at 15 by 15. Okay, we just made a cube pretty much using a hexagon. Alright, let's make this a little bit more advanced. I'm just going to copy, paste in place with control F, and expand out a little bit. Let's say we want to make some details in here. I'm going to have just a straight line that we can repeat. I'm going to lock that layer down, go to the next layer. And here is where I want to use my square as a guideline at the outside. So I'm going to select both the square and that line. Control C to copy, Control F to paste in place. And let's rotate it by two. Two goes in 360 easily. I'm just hitting Control C, Control F, and Control D to repeat that whole process of putting this around here. So we could keep on going like this, but I'll stop one, two degrees before that outside. I know. So if I select all this now, copy, paste in place, and rotate at 60 degrees, it should fill up this side here. Control F, Control C, Control F, Control D, Control C, Control F. Yeah, we just quickly filled that up. So let's maybe put in a little bit of stippling within this area. Let's lock this layer down. And I'm just going to use a circle with a complete black fill. And this is kind of a 
fine art technique, but you can use it within Illustrator. This is one of those things where you probably want to turn off your smart guides by going up to view and turn off smart guides, or you could use control U. So to copy and paste this without actually hitting control C and control V, you can actually hold down the alt button on your keyboard and see how you get this black arrow and a white arrow that means it's going to duplicate it so you can just keep on holding down alt and you can quickly duplicate an object and move it around so say you're doing a lot of stippling and it's taking forever and you don't want to do that make a outside guiding box and we could duplicate this and reflect it onto that side. So by doing that we can hit Control A to select everything, Control C, let's paste in place, Control F, then go up to Object, Transform, Reflect. And this is going to reflect it onto this side. Well, we want to get this group over to here so we need to rotate it by 60 degrees. Now, let's just kind of fill in the center point. So it doesn't, kind of looks a little bit asymmetrical and you can't really try to blend in the fact that we just duplicated it real quick. Now we got a little bit of shading stipple going on. See, when you look at it from afar, it just kind of looks like it's a little bit shaded in there. So let's repeat this whole thing around the outside. Just going to grab our guiding box, select it, Control A for select everything, copy, paste, and place, and rotate by 60 degrees. So really, everything from this point is going to be uh, pretty repetitive. I'll just show you the box formation that I'm going to start around this outside, and then I'm just going to start winging it. Um, and from there, I'll just speed it up so this doesn't become like a three-hour tutorial video. Anyways, um, let's add a little box to the outside here. So to build it, I'm going to hold down Alt while using the square. I'm just going to line it right up there. I'm trying to get it aligned to the, the little rays that are poking out here. And yeah, I'm just clicking and dragging. I'm holding Alt to expand from the middle point. So now I'm going to add a point by with the plus button using pens tool, add anchor point tool, and add an anchor point there, add an anchor point there, and deleting this. Then I'm just going to rotate it around the outside here. Alright, I'm going to just go and work ahead on this. Um, really, it's just a combination of all these techniques. Maybe copying and pasting and rotating, reflecting over. And yeah, I'll speed up this process so you can kind of see what's going on. You could always, to speed up things, you could say with a guiding box, copy, paste, place, reflect over here. Now you can do two objects at once if you want to rotate them. Sure. When you start playing with this, you'll start figuring out techniques yourself, how you want to speed up things. Really it's just repeating these techniques.
Yeah, I'll just work away here, and I'll be right back. All right, well, the last little step I just finished off in Photoshop because I kind of like bringing things in to invert the colors. But, uh, yeah, I hope this helps. Uh, it's really just a repetition of those basic techniques. Um, this obviously is something. <laughs> There's lots of things I wouldn't change, but as for demonstration purposes goes, it's completely fine. Um, if you have any questions at all, feel free to ask. You can easily get a hold of me on Facebook at facebook.com slash brockisart or you can get a hold of me on Instagram at Instagram at brockisart and on YouTube at brockisart. That's easy like that. Anyways, I'm always willing to answer any questions so feel free to ask away even if it's not in regards to uh, Mandala's creation in itself. Anyways, I hope you uh, enjoyed this and this helps. Uh, take care. This is Brock Sprinkstead, and until next time.